Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is alleged good guy malware. Now, I first noticed this story last Friday, but didn't have time to make a video about it. But it's interesting enough that I wanted to come back to it this week. In a blog post, Symantec described a new piece of malware, which they call Wifatch. Now, the original person that actually found this malware running on his router, he calls it IfWatch, because IfWatch is the process he found running on his router. This malware, if you can call it that, is actually a Perl script. It's searching out for embedded Linux devices, most Mostly Linux-based consumer routers, but maybe other Internet of Things devices like webcams that run embedded Linux. If this type of device has an open Telenet port that has a insecure or default password, this malicious or, or gray hat uh, Perl script will infect the router with the WIFAT malware. And once it does, it creates a, a connection to a peer-to-peer -peer botnet so that the author has some access to the router. But here's where it gets interesting. This particular malware doesn't seem to do anything malicious. In fact, one of the things it does is close or disable the insecure Telenet port. Really, you shouldn't be exposing Telenet to the public, especially if you have a bad default password. In fact, the malware, besides disabling the Telenet port, even leaves a message recommending you change your password. The uh, malware also searches the device looking for other common Linux malware examples to try to clean it and to harden the device. So it really appears the authors or the threat actors behind a WIFATCH actually have altruistic motives. Now that said, I'm still very skeptical of anything that creates unauthorized access to your device. Technically, even if your motives are great, installing software on someone else's computer without authorization is illegal. Now this does remind me of a lot of fun conversations I've had at Black Hat or security conferences. Researchers have always imagined, well, if there's a new zero-day vulnerability, why don't I exploit that vulnerability and then use my elevated privilege to patch the system I'm, I'm fixing? And that way I can create a worm that actually patches all the systems that are affected by the worm. This is kind of a fun idea, theoretically, but it really is a bad idea. I mean, first of all, if the person creating this patch makes a mistake, he can take systems down. Also, if you're rebooting or, or doing these sorts of activities on a production system, you might be disrupting somebody else's business. So even if the authors behind Wifatch have altruistic motives, it's something that I don't think they should do. Now another interesting update, early this week the authors behind this malware contacted Symantec and Symantec was able to actually ask them some questions. And according to the authors, they did do this as an experiment and it really was to improve the security of these Linux devices. They even argue that the chance of them rebooting your device and disrupting your network is probably worth it if they're securing your router. Again, that said, even though I think this is a really interesting story, I don't think it's a good idea for other people out there to install stuff to secure other people's devices. Anyways, what are the takeaways here? They're pretty simple. You really shouldn't have open Telenet ports on the internet and you absolutely need to change your default passwords. This particular Perl script didn't uh, take advantage of any vulnerabilities in the Linux systems out there. Rather, it just took advantage of the fact that many people have bad passwords on publicly available Telenet connections. Well, that's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.